please rise for the Vice Chancellor's procession. The Vice Chancellor's procession is led by the Deputy Registrar Senate Matters, Mr. M. O. Obie. The Vice Chancellor's procession comprises the Provost, College of Medical Sciences, Deans of Faculties, Directors of Institutes, and Academic Programs. The Vice Chancellor's Procession. Provost, deans, and directors are taking their positions. And here comes principal officers of the great University of Benin. Of course, the vice chancellor, Professor Lillian Imwetinyan Salami, is the head of that wonderful team. Please remain standing as we take the national anthem, the first stanza followed by the Uniben anthem. sit. Uh, ebullient, energetic, and pragmatic Vice Chancellor, the distinguished Professor Lillian Imwetinya Salami. Other, thank you, you, you can clap. 
Thank you very much. Other principal officers of our great university, the provost, deans, and directors, our former vice chancellor, Professor Oshodin. <laughs> Professors Emeriti, other esteemed professors and erudite scholars here present, top government functionaries, your royal highnesses, greatest Uniben staff and students, invited guests, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's another great day of academic excellence and scholarship as we welcome you to this high-powered I'll tell you why it is high powered. This high powered 240th inaugural lecture of the University of Benin. If Uniben were a country or state, today's lecturer would be described as a number three citizen of the university. I'm talking about the Deputy Vice Chancellor, academic, and the Professor of Wood Science and Renewable Energy Utilization, Professor David Nusakaya Ode Izeko. <laughs> His topic is Wood Utilization, the tree, man, and his environment. What alternative? do we have? May I at this point invite the Registrar of the University, Mr. Ademola Bobola, to introduce the Vice-Chancellor and the Vice-Chancellor's procession. Mr. Registrar. Please permit me to stand on the existing protocol and to present to us the number one citizen on this campus, a pride to womanhood, a distinguished scholar, and uh, the woman of substance who is driving Unibest to the highest level. <clears throat> of course, you don't introduce uh, eminent personalities, you only present them. And so it's my singular honor and privilege to present to this august audience our own Professor Lilian Imwetian Salami, the Vice Chancellor of this university. Of course, an eminent scholar as our Vice Chancellor has in our entourage very distinguished and eminent scholars as well. I'm very closely seated to her on the entourage is Professor Mrs. Adesu Aosanho, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Administration. <laughs> the third position, just like the PRO has just said, is a very big position. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dual one. We have him as a lecturer for today, and he's also in his own position too. Uh, he attended the best university of the first generation in Nigeria, which is Unibest. He also attended the best university of technology in Nigeria since 2014. Professor David Izeko, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic. <laughs> and of course, our inaugural lecturer for today. We have also the Deputy Vice Chancellor Ekenwa Campus, Professor J.U. Ogene. And on the Vice Chancellor's entourage, we have the Bursa of the University of the Azteca, Dr. V.U. Imagwe. The librarian, the university librarian, is also very much with us here, Dr. Luke Obasuyi. And of course, we have a host of the provost, and then the deans, and then directors who are sharing the ship of this institution. 
with our own dear Vice Chancellor, first representing the Provost College of Medical Sciences, Professor K. O. Aigwe. And also here, the Dean of our Postgraduate Studies, Professor F. E. Okeme. And then the Dean of Students, Dean of Struggles, and Dean of um, Empowerment of our students' populace. Greatest University. Uh, our Dean of Students is Professor P. O. Ibinadua. We also have Professor E. R. Orue, the host, I mean, the Dean of Agriculture and is the host dean for today's event. Yes. I can understand why the clapping has to last that long. Also here, on the Vice Chancellor Censoraj, we have the representative of the Dean of Faculty of Arts, Dr. Frank Ipomonsa. Uh, also here, the Dean of Basic Medical Sciences, Professor F.O. Agoreo. The Dean Faculty of Engineering, who is handing over the baton to the inaugural lecturer today, because two weeks ago he was flying the kites to the moon before the Vice Chancellor called for uh, caution uh, for stabilize, stabilization. And he is no other person than Professor J.A. Akobi, the Dean of Engineering. Representing the Dean of Faculty of Environmental Sciences is Dr. K.J. Eweka. And the Dean of Faculty of Law, Professor V.O. Aigbo Kaibo. The Dean Faculty of Life Sciences, Professor N.J. Rui. The Dean Faculty of Management Sciences, Professor E. L. Dabo. The Dean School of Medicine, Professor W. E. Sado. And of course, the Dean, I mean, the, we have the directors, uh, a host of them here, uh, also on the entourage here. The Director, CRPU and ICT, Professor David Ogwefun. We have Director Distance Learning Program, Professor C.O. Emokaro. And then Director Students Guidance and Counseling, Professor Mrs. V.E. Audu. Director Center for Educational Technology, Professor H. Oek Hina. And then Director Ted Fund Center of Excellence, Professor O.J. Abolagba. <laughs> Director Central, uh, Central Research Laboratory, Professor Mrs. Ikoria. <laughs> Director, Acting Director, Institute of Child Health, Dr. D. Mwaneri, <laughs> Acting Director, Institute of Education, Dr. Mrs. I. F. Iyamu, <laughs> Director, uh, Acting Director, IPAES, Dr. E. O. Ogato, Director, Center for Maritime and ICT, Dr. D. O. Onaiwu. <laughs> Director, General Studies, uh, uh, Dr. Etinosa Ibinosa. <laughs> Acting Director, UBITS, Dr. J. E. Egwale. <laughs> and the last but not the least, on the Vice Chancellor Centorite, the Director of Quality Assurance, Professor Mrs. Eki Ogueri. 
Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> having gone through with uh, some Chinese pronunciation of some of our names, which, of which I pardon your, uh, I seek your understanding, uh, it is my singular honor and privilege to welcome the woman of the moment who is driving Unibest to the <laughs> highest level of excellence worldwide, making Uniben the best among uh, the topmost universities in the world. So it is my honor and privilege to invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lilian Imatrio The registrar, thank you. How dare you forget to invite uh, to recognize my own dean? You want me to be queried? The dean of education, please stand so that they know you are here. <laughs> Professor EOS Yamu. I have to return back there after some time. You know that. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the 20, 240th inaugural lecture series of the great University of Benin. Today's lecture is the 12th to be delivered in my tenure as the Vice Chancellor of this great institution. The 10th in the Faculty of Agriculture and the very first in the Department of Forest Resources and Wildlife Management. As it is usual, I am glad to report that students have returned back to campus after the first semester break and the second semester academic activities for the 2019-2020 academic session are ongoing in the various faculties, schools, as well as institutes. I want to use this medium to appreciate all stakeholders and to further solicit for your cooperation in ensuring that the current academic session concludes without hedges. The National Sports Festival tagged Edo 2020, where the university served as the Games Village, has been successfully concluded. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce our lecturer for today. He is Professor David Nosahari Izeko. Oh, did I hear Nosahari De Izeko? <laughs> the title of his lecture is Wood Utilization, The Tree, Man and His Environment. What alternative do we have? Professor David Nosahari Izeko was born in Benin City, Edo State, on the 24th of August, 1972, to the family of Mr. and Mrs. David I. Omorui. He had his primary education at Uwa Primary School, Benin City, and thereafter proceeded to Western Boys High School, Benin City, where he obtained his West African school certificate in 1988. Professor David Izeko had his BSc Agriculture, Forestry and Wildlife degree in 1998 from the University of Benin, where, where he earned a second class honors upper division. He was posted to Plateau State in 1999 for his mandatory one year National Youth Service Corps scheme where he served in Plateau Agricultural Development prog uh, Program as subject master specialist for agroforestry. The zona office then in Mangu, local government area of Plateau State, where he served. He obtained his master's degree, Master of Wood Science and Utilization from the University of Benin in 2004 and PhD Wood Science and Utilization from Federal University of Technology, Akure, in 2010. Prof 
Professor David Izeko joined the services of the University of Benin in September 2001 as a graduate assistant and rose through the ranks to the pos position of professor on 1st October 2019. He has held several administrative positions in the University of Benin and has served in various committees and boards within and outside the University of Benin with tangible contributions towards advancing the frontiers of knowledge and improvement in academic standard. I will attempt to abridge some of this position that he has heard. He was appointed coordinator on the graduate student seminar, examination officer, coordinator part-time program, faculty exam officer, assistant dean, School of Postgraduate Studies, two-time congregation representative to Senate, head of Department Forestry Resources and Wildlife Management from 2017 to 2019. Professor David Izeko has also served in various boards and committees of the university. He served as member, staff students relationship committee, member, representing faculty of agriculture at the National Center for Energy and Environment, member faculty of Agri agriculture students disciplinary committee on examination misconduct, member general studies board of studies, member tax force committee on the organization and training of pedagogy for young intermediate lecturers, member School of Postgraduate Board of Studies, Senate Representative on Central Exam Examination Committee, Member University of Benin Annual Research Day Coordinator, Member Tax Force Committee on Boundary Units, and Member University Farm Project Management Committee. Others include Chairman Organizing Committee on Postgraduate Studies Conference, Chairman University of Benin Inaugural Lecture Committee, Chairman Eminent Lecture Series, Chairman University Inter Faculty Transfer Committee, Chairman General Studies Management Board, Chairman Exams and Records Service Delivery Committee up till date. Prior to his present appointment as Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor David Izeko was a member of the University Governing Council, served as the Director of General Studies of University of Benin between July 2019 to February 2020. Professor David Izeko's academic and professional career base has spanned teaching and research in the university system, and his research interests include wood science and utilization, renewable energy, wood composition boards, and utilization of food products. He has a lot of interest in national and international needs-driven research. He has published over 40 articles in highly reputable journals, both at national and international levels, and he belongs to different academic and professional bodies. David, uh, Professor David Izeko is a core researcher and has supervised several students at both the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. He is reputed for his veracity, dynamism, hard work, diligence, and commitment. No wonder why he is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics. He is, a he is a recipient of the Forestry Association of Nigeria Distinguished Forestry Ambassador Award in recognition of his consistent contribution to forestry development and exceptional accomplishments in his career. Professor David Izeko is a devout Christian and a Knight of the Order of St. Christopher Anglican Communion. He is married to his amiable wife, Dame Dr. O.B. Izeko, and their union is blessed with children. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to invite Professor David 
Nosakai Izeko, a professor of wood science and renewable energy utilization, and a very committed ambassador of this university, and of course, a devoted and committed Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic is to deliver his lecture. Thank you. The Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration. Deputy Vice Chancellor Ekehuan Campus, the Registrar of the University, the Boxer, the Librarian, Provost, College of Medical Sciences, Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, my own Dean, Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, other Deans and Director, members of University of Benin Governing Council, members of University of Benin Senate, academic and non-academic staff of the University, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal. Gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, greatest university students. Yes. Madam Vice Chancellor, ma'am, it is with great gratitude to the Almighty God and joy unspeakable that I stand before you all today to deliver the 240th inaugural lecture of University of Benin. This is the first inaugural lecture to be delivered in the Department of Forest Resources and Wildlife Management since its inception in 1984, and it tends from the Faculty of Agriculture. <laughs> Vice Chancellor Mann, the title of this lecture, Wood Utilization, the Tree, Man, and His Environment, What Alternative Do We Have? It highlights the importance of efficient wood utilization to our everyday life and in every aspect of human endeavor in ensuring sustainability of wood products. The concept of sustainability in all facets, be it ecological, economic, or social, are all vital to forest management in order not to impact negatively on the other goods and services from the forest that are beneficial to man. Wood is the most versatile raw material the world has ever known throughout history. It remains the most predominant material used for construction and energy generation until the last half of the 19th century. The utilization of wood by man for various domestic and industrial purposes is as old as human existence itself, as recorded in the Holy Bible. Of Noah's Ark, Genesis chapter 6, verse 14. The Ark of Covenant was made of wood, Exodus 25, verse 10. The Holy Tabernacle was made of wood, Exodus 25, verse 27. The Holy Temple was built of wood, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Jonah's ship was also made of wood, Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. Musical instruments such as harp, guilta, string, string instrument, and drums were all made of wood, as recorded in Psalm chapter 150, verse 1 to 4. Wood is still widely used in contemporary time for construction purposes and also serves as a valuable industrial raw material for pulp and paper industry, methanol, wood adhesive, and other chemical derivatives. Wood, by its very nature, is a valuable material in every stage of human development. At the early age of a child birth, the baby rests in a wooden cot, plays with wooden toy. At school age, the child learns to write on wooden slate and paper. On graduating from school, he is given a paper certificate, and when he is gratefully employed, his salary is paid in paper currency. His household furniture are mainly made of wood. He sleeps on a wooden bed, and when he is old, he uses a wooden walking stick. And finally, when called to eternity, his body is laid in a wooden coffin. <laughs> wood and its product are pivotal in the provision of shelter, energy, food, and health services. They also contribute significantly to educational development, communication, entertainment, electrification, sports, and industrialization. Introduction. Historically, the unique characteristic and comparative abundance of wood have made it a natural material for homes, structure, furniture, tools, vehicles, and other decorative objects. Today, 
For the same reasons, wood is prized for a multitude of uses. It is a lignose cellulosic material and a renewable natural resource that is composed of cellulose, ligni, hemicellulose, and the strenuous material contained in the cellular structure. Wood is produced as a result of new tissue being formed as the tree grows in guts through the cambian cells. They cover the trunk and branches of tree just beneath the back. Wood is the oldest and the most widely used of all structural material. It is of plant origin. However, not all plant possesses woody stems, and not all that do possess woody stems can produce timber suitable for use as industrial material. There are two broad classes of wood, namely the softwood and the hardwood. And the hardwood, the softwood and the genospen, also referred to as conifers or coneberry plant. Characteristically, they have needle-shaped leaves and they bear naked seeds. Example of softwood species are Pinus sylvestris, PCA abyss, and pseudo suga mesiansi. The hardwood species, on the other hand, are the angiosperm. These are also known as diocotyledons. They have broad leaves and the seeds are enclosed in the seed case. Examples are Tetona grandis, Nuclear diderichi, and Triplochytin sclerozylum. Wood convection. The mechanical processing is the most common method of converting wood to utilizable products, either through the use of simple hand tools or complex mechanized process for Wakwe 2000. The mechanical processes involved in the primary breakdown of log into utilizable form include saw milling and ply milling. The history of saw milling in Nigeria dates back to the 18th century with pit sawing as the earliest form of convection, where timber was converted with the use of simple tools such as as and cutlass, as recorded by Okigbo 1964. There are basically no laid down rules as to how log is to be cut. Cutting is usually determined by such factors as species, quality, size, defect, and most importantly, the utilization of the cut log. There are three main methods that are used in the conversion of logs. These are the flat or the plain sawing, which is the cheapest log sawing method, also called the true and true sawing. In this process, the log is sawed tangentially to the growth ring and perpendicular to the wood rays. The second type is the quarter sawing, where the logs are cut into quarter, and each quarter is sawn true and true. The third is the rib sawing, where the log is milled carefully at an angle between 45 and 75 degrees. This sawing pattern is preferred by furniture maker because of the pattern of milling wood for vertical, vertical grain that is shown from all sides. Figure one. Figure one is the sawing method. This is the plain sawing, this is quarter sawing, and this is fifth sawing. When we have done with the sawing, these are the products that are obtained from different sawing methods that are used in sawmills. After sawing, the next thing we do is to classify our sawn lumber into different classes. And the process of doing that is what we refer to as grading. By way of simple definition, grading is the sorting of timber into quality class or grade according to the use to which the timber is to be put. The objective is to classify some timber into quality classes, irrespective of its manufacturing process, use, species, and usefulness. The timber trade employ three systems of grading, which are the defect system, the cutting system, and the stress grading system. My contribution to knowledge in wood science and utilization. Madam Vice Chancellor Mann, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, having given an insight into my area of academic expertise, wood science and renewable energy utilization, it is pertinent at this juncture to give an account of my modest contribution to the subject matter. The focus of my lecture shall be from the point of my appointment as a graduate assistant in 2001 to the point of my elevation to a full professor in 2018. I am very fortunate and most grateful to Madam Vice Chancellor for the opportunity given me to deliver my inaugural lecture within two years of my elevation to the rank of a university professor. The, the greatest contemporary problem in wood processing in Nigeria is the deficit in wood supply due to rising population and the increasing demand for wood and its products. The inefficient method of wood harvesting Conversion and utilization process has resulted in both shortage of raw material supplied to wood industry 
as well as serious environmental degradation. It is therefore necessary to develop a technology that will ensure better and efficient utilization of the dwindling forest resources base of the country. To this end, I have arranged my research work under the following sub team for ease of presentation. One, timber supply trend. Trees are extracted from the forest in the form of logs, and these logs are converted to utilizable products through mechanical process at the sawmill. Izeko and Okoro 2004 did a study on the trend in the volume of logs supplied to sawmill over a period of 10 years. The study evaluated the quality and quantity of logs supplied to sawmills in the from 1991 to 2000. Findings from the study showed that the volume of logs supplied to sawmill for the period was about 4 million 689378 meter cube, and the volume supply trend ranged from 813,006 meter cube in 1991, and this declined to 183,864 meter cube in the year 2000. A follow-up study was carried out on the comparative analysis of the trend in the volume of logs supplied to sawmills in the Edo State from 2002 to 2009. Izeko and Adame, 2011. The result of the study showed a rapid decline in the volume of log supply to sawmills in the last decade. The rapidly declining rate of the once buoyant forest estate in Edo State was attributed to the uncontrolled exploitation of the forest estate through illegal logging activities, the reservation for agriculture, and urbanization. The rapid depletion of the forest resources has put the environment in jeopardy, causing life-threatening problems such as climate change, food security, water scarcity, epidemics, erosion, poverty, death, and conflict around the world due to competition for resources, UNDP 2006. The situation has resulted in insufficient availability of raw material supply to wood-based industries. Figure two, these are logs that have been extracted from the forest to be taken to the sawmill for convection. Table one also showed the comparative analysis. Table one showed the, is the comparative analysis of the decline in the volume of some common timber species supplied to sawmills in Edo State between 1991 to 2000 and 2002 to 2001. The declining rate was so high, as high as 87% through 85% to 92%. Further study was carried out to determine the causes of rapid of the rapid decrease in the volume of log supply to sawmills, the study focuses on the influence of illegal logging on log supply to sawmills in Edo State. The results of our study show that there were over 40 different timber species supplied to sawmills in the study area. Out of this number, seven species were the most affected by illegal, illegal logging activities. These species were Militia Essessa, Caria species, Azalea africana, Masonia lotissima, Guaria species, Lovia trachyloides, and Cordia pititera. The prevalence of this illicit timber exploitation was attributed to the lucrativeness of timber business and the unethical demand by some corrupt forestry staff who are supposed to manage the forest for sustained yield production. Is that called at all? 2005. Two, wood as a construction material. It is a known fact that wood is as old as human civilization and it has been put into various uses by man. It has and is still being used in the area of building, construction, railroad, telegraphic, and power transmission line, furniture, pulp and paper, packaging, ship, and boat building. It is an important renewable resource which has become inseparable from man's structural and other numerous domestic and industrial purposes. In spite of strong competition from plastic and metal, wood has continued to be man's companion for construction uses, such as roof trusses, wall plates, Poline, ceiling, shuttering, scaffolding, flooring, doors, and window frames. Wood is dimensionally unstable when exposed to changes in relative humidity. Therefore, a good technical knowledge of the variation in the characteristic property of wood is necessary for its appropriate application. Izeko and Fuwakwe 2010 studied the Asia and radial variation in the physical property of plantation-grown Tetona Grandis wood in Edo State. The findings from the study reveal a general trend in the variation of wood density, percentage shrinkage, and thickness swelling among different age classes of plantation-grown Tetona Grandis wood. 
also radial and tangential shrinkage of wood decreased from the butts of the log to its crown point with increasing age of the tree. Ezekiel and Modugu, 2010. There was an increase in mean percentage thickness swelling from the tree base to the top, as well as from the inner wood to the outer wood. Ezekiel and Fuwakbe, 2010C, evaluated the variations in the mechanical properties such as modulus of rupture, modulus of elasticity, and compressive strength parallel to grain among trees of the same and different age classes of 15, 20, and 25-year-old Tetonan Grandis wood. The finding from the study shows significant differences in mechanical properties within and between trees of the same and different age classes of Tetuna Grandis. Generally, mechanical property decreased from the tree base to the top and increased from the pit outward to the back. Mechanical properties increase with increasing age of the tree, an indication that the effect of age is one of the most important socks of heat variation, Izeko and Okoro, 2006. Further findings from our study revealed that wood density and mechanical properties increase with increase in age of the tree. There was correlation between density and mechanical properties of wood. Therefore, density is a valuable indicator in predicting the mechanical properties of wood used for construction purposes. Izeko et al., 2010. Izeko and Fuwakwe, 2011, studied the variation in the anatomical characteristics of Tetona Grandis wood. We observed that fiber length, fiber diameter, and cell wall thickness increase with increase in age, while fiber lumen width decrease with increase in age of the tree. The effect of age, longitudinal, and radial position contributed significantly to variations in anatomical characteristics of Tetona Grandis wood. Okoro and Izeko, 2004. Correlation between fiber length characteristics and mechanical properties among different age classes of Tetona Grandis wood was studied in Zeko and Fuwakwe 2012. The finding from the study showed a strong positive correlation between fiber length characteristics and mechanical properties of wood. The linear regression equation model gave the best fit for the relationship. Thus, fiber length is a major contributor to the mechanical properties of Tetona Grandis wood and can therefore be used in predicting its strengths. Izeko and Ewawan, 2017, studied the strength property of Abyssia ferrugina as a construction material in building and furniture industry. The study assessed the MORO, MOE, CS parallel to grain, and MS parallel to grain. The strength property of Abyssia ferrugina wood, a lesser known timber species, compared favorably well with the mechanical properties of other well known and highly sought after timber species. Therefore, the research concluded that the wood of Abyssia foregina could serve effectively as alternative raw material in the building construction and furniture industry. Table two is the mean value of the mechanical property of Abyssia foregina wood. This is a lesser known timber species in about a decade ago, but today it can be used effectively as an alternative in place of the highly sought after timber species that are no longer available in our forest. Number three, production of wood composite board. Historically, wood was used only in its solid form as large timber. As the availability of large diameter timber trees decreased, the wood industry looked to replace large diameter product and solid lumber with reconstituted wood product made using smaller diameter tree, sawdust, and pulp mill waste. There has been a considerable increase in recent years on the production and application of Wood composite, which is a combination of two or more elements held together by matrix. Zeko and Mondi, 2014, studied the dimensional stability and strength properties of wood plastic composite produced from sawdust of Cordia aleodora. The study evaluated the effect of densities and missing ratio on the physical and mechanical properties of wood plastic composite board as meeting ratio 1 to 1 to 1 to 14 and nominal densities of 700 kg per millimeter cube and 800 kg per millimeter cube, respectively. Wood plastic composites were successfully produced at increased sawdust to plastic ratio, ranging from 1 to 1 and 1 to 14 missing ratio level. The results show that the higher the sawdust to plastic ratio, the higher the dimensional stability of wood plastic composite board that were produced. Thickness swelling, water absorption and linear expansion 
are a measure of dimensional stability. Therefore, increase in nominal density resulted in an increased moisture resistance and ultimately more dimensionally stable balls. Izeko and Ediallo 2017 studied the effect of adhesive on the strength property of particle board manufactured from sawdust of different wood species. Particle board was successfully manufactured from sawdust of triplocatin sclerosylon, nuclear diderichi, and saiba petandra wood species, mixed with different adhesive under high temperature and pressure. The results show the general trend in the pattern of variation on the effect of adhesive on the strength property of particle board produced from sawdust of different wood species. Therefore, the manufacture of particle board from sawdust should be based on species with known physical and mechanical properties. Zeko et al. 2013 studied the effect of geometric particle sizes of wood floor on strength and dimensional property of wood plastic composite using wood floor of different particle sizes compounded with recycled low density polyethylene at different wood plastic ratio. The study showed that wood floor size of 2 mm and wood plastic ratio 1 to 1 produced the best effect on the strength property and dimensional stability of wood plastic composite board. Table 3 is the mechanical property of wood plastic composite at different particle sizes and missing ratio. Further study on the physical mechanical properties of cement bonded particle board using bambusa vulgaris and melana laboria fiber show that the cement bonded particle board produced with pretreatment were more dimensionally stable and have better strength property than the untreated cement bonded particle balls. Calcium chloride treatment additive increases the strength property of cement bonded particle board, while aluminum sulfate increases its resistance to water absorption and dimensional failure. Izeko and Iraq women, 2015. Therefore, particle geometry stratification and the use of pretreatment additive have positive, positive effects on the physical and mechanical properties of cement bonded particle balls. Four, wood conversion and residue utilization. There are basically no laid-down rules as to how log is to be cut. However, the poor log conversion techniques adopted in most sawmills in Nigeria is to a large extent responsible for the rapid decline of raw material input into the sawmill. The lumber recovery factors in most sawmills vary between 45 and 50%. Top 1983, Fuwakwe 1986. The implication is that about 50 to 55 percent of log input into the sawmills are left as wood residue. Izeko et al. 2016 studied the effect of taper and sawing method on log convection among some selected sawmills in Edo State. Our findings from the study showed that log size, taper, and length of log have positive relationship with lumber recovery efficiency. The study further revealed that lumber recovery efficiency tend to increase with larger log diameter, short log length, and narrower taper. Therefore, increased conversion efficiency will lead to an increased lumber recovery and consequently a reduction in the rate of waste generated during conversion. The byproduct of log conversion can be classified into two categories, namely avoidable and unavoidable waste. Avoidable waste are those waste generated during convection process, which can ordinarily be avoided. Such waste results from inadequate soil maintenance, improper sowing, and lack of proper log impaction before sowing. Unavoidable waste are those waste that cannot be avoided or prevented during sowing operation, even where the soil curve is minimal and the sawmill workers are efficient. Examples of such waste include sawdust, slabs, wain, and bark. The volume of wood residue generated in the course of log conversion is enormous and needs to be efficiently utilized. Izeko and Kalu 2008 did a study on sawmill wood waste in Bini City and reported a total of 44.6% of usable log lost as sawmill wood waste during sawmill operation. This is a large amount of wood which results in great loss in monetary terms as well as contributing to the rapid declining rate of our nation forest resources. Figure three. These are sawmill wood waste and are termed as unavoidable sawmill wood waste. These are bags and slabs that are, that are generated during log conversion process. 
The potential of Sami wood waste utilization in meeting the household energy needs of Benin City residents was a sex. Izeko and Usayime 2010, Izeko and Amiadame 2017. The study evaluated the quantity and type of Sami wood waste generated during wood conversion process and its level of utilization by consumers in the provision of their household energy needs. The study showed a high level utilization of Sami wood waste in its various forms, such as sawdust, bark, wain, slabs, and toss contributed significantly in meeting this household energy requirement of Bini City residents. The utilization of Sami wood waste, if properly harnessed, could contribute significantly in conserving our rapidly declining forest resources, Izeko and Mudugu, 2011. Sawdust and wood shaving, for example, can be converted into briquettes and could serve as a good source of domestic energy. Figure four. These are sawmill wood waste. It is also an example of unavoidable sawmill wood waste that are generated during log conversion. They could be used into byproducts of, byproducts of wood in the production of briquettes, which could serve as a good source of household energy. Briquette has some advantage over foil wood as a result of its relative cheapness and high density as compared to sawdust and therefore has more thermal content per unit volume. Izeko and Nottier Woman 2015 evaluated the physical properties and combustion efficiency of briquette produced from sawdust of different wood species. The briquette produced have good calorific value and high percentage volatile matter. The successful production of briquette from sawdust exemplify the potentials of appropriate technology for the effective utilization of wood residue in our sawmills. Further study on the utilization of sawdust for briquette production show that large quantity of sawdust, which are usually considered as waste in sawmills, can be successfully converted into high quality and durable fuel wood briquettes that could serve as alternative source of energy suitable for both domestic and industrial energy utilization. Izeko and Amiadame, 2013. Figure five. These are examples of briquettes that are produced using sawdust, which were before now considered as waste in the sawmills. This briquette could be used as a source of household energy for both domestic and small-scale commercial purposes. The utilization of sawmill wood waste for charcoal production as a household energy source in Benin City was assessed in Zeko and Mudugu 2014. The finding from the study revealed that charcoal utilization provides an economic and moderately cheap source of household energy to its users. Charcoal as a byproduct of wood conversion is being utilized for a number of purposes, ranging from domestic cooking to food preservation and processing. Charcoal provides one of the most efficient sources of household energy to consumers in Benin City due to its relative cheapness, convenience, and use. Availability and efficiency, Kalu and Izeko, 2007. Charcoal remains the most important source of energy for domestic and small-scale commercial processing and food preparation. Acknowledgements. Madam Vice Chancellor Man, I want to use this opportunity to express my appreciation and thanks to God Almighty, the I am that I am, and the maker of heaven and earth, for all that I am and all that I will be. I give God all the glory and his name be praised forever. For he alone is worthy of all praises and adoration. Our very dear amiable Vice Chancellor, the multidisciplinary scholar, multi-talented professor of home economics, human nutrition, and hospitality. The very distinguished professor, Lilian Imweti Yan Salami. <laughs> the Vice Chancellor of University of Benin. I am most grateful to you, man, for finding me worthy to be appointed as your Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics. And Tos gave me the rare privilege and opportunity to be part of the success story of this administration. I thank you for the confidence reposed in me, for the support, the encouragement, and your motherly advice, which has helped me in no small measure in the discharge of my duties. Madam Vice Chancellor, for the opportunity to deliver my inaugural lecture, I say thank you, and may God Almighty continue to bless and keep you and your household. <laughs> my special appreciation goes to the immediate past Vice Chancellor of our great university, Professor FFO Orumese 
old boy of the prestigious Western Boys High School, Benin City. Well, I will tell you why Western Boys is very prestigious in the University of Benin. Western Boys High School, which is a school I attended, has produced two vice chancellors for this university. One of them is here present, the former vice chancellor of this university, Professor Oji Oshodi. <laughs> Professor FFO Rumesi is also, also from Western Boys High School. The same Western Boys High School has produced two deputy vice chancellor administration for this great university. And also, Western Boys High School has produced two deputy vice chancellor academic for this university. I am one of them. I am most grateful for his favorable disposition towards me during his tenure in office, thus culminating in my multiple appointments, first as assistant dean, school of postgraduate studies, position I held for five years, head of department, forest resources and wildlife management, chairman, post Mr. DE, and also director, general studies of the university. In a special way, I want to express my gratitude to our former vice chancellor, professor, Osayuki Godwin Oshodi for his continuous love, care, and support. Sir, I am very grateful for all your encouragement. I pray that God will continue to bless you and members of your household. Sincerely, I express my gratitude to Professor Abuliman Richard Anao, former Vice Chancellor of this university, who graciously approved my appointment as graduate assistant in 2001, thus making it possible for me to take up a career in academic. In this my academic voyage, I am grateful to several persons. Worthy of mention is Dr. S.P.A. Okoro, my supervisor at the undergraduate and master's level, for your encouragement, fatherly advice, and for helping to facilitate my appointment as lecturer in the University of Benin. I am particularly grateful to my PhD major supervisor, Professor Joseph Adiola Fuwakbe, Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, Akure. He would have loved to be here, but he's currently in the United States for his annual vacation, and he's unable to come. I thank him for his assistance, guidance, support, and patience during my PhD studies. My sincere appreciation also goes to Professor A.O. Oluyege, of the Department of Forestry and Wood Technology, the Federal University of Technology, Akure, who co supervised my PhD work. I appreciate the assistance of Pastor Dr. Jacob Owoyemi, then Chief Technologist at Futa Wood Workshop, now an Associate Professor, for his support during my PhD research laboratory work. I want to specially thank the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Mrs. A.I. Odahon, Deputy Vice Chancellor at Kenwa Campus, Professor J.U. Ogene, the Registrar, Mr. Demola Bobola, the Boxer, Dr. V.U. Imagbe, the Librarian, Dr. Luke Obasuyi, and the former Acting Registrar of this university, Mr. Klassin I. Ehigiato, for the friendship and good working relationship amongst us. I am grateful to Professor Victor E. Omozuwa, former Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies, for his fatherly support, advice, and encouragement while I serve with him as the Assistant Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies. Now to my academic father and mentor, Professor Felis E. Okiemie, the Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies. I am particularly grateful to you for your trust and confidence, even when you knew me less. As Assistant Dean in the School of Postgraduate Studies, you did not only give me responsibilities, you gave me authority and all that were needed for me to succeed in my given task thus making my work very easy and interesting. You have been a father, advisor, and a very strong pillar of support to me. You have been a blessing and a source of inspiration to me. May God Almighty continue to bless and keep you and your family. I am very grateful to my head of department and the support of my colleague in the Department of Forest Resources and Wildlife Management. Similarly, I thank my colleague in the Faculty of Agriculture with whom I have good working relationship. Time will not permit me to mention the name of everybody, but if you pick a copy of the inaugural lecture, everyone has been acknowledged accordingly. I also wish to use this opportunity to appreciate all 
who have imparted my career meaningfully. The list will be inexhaustible at any given time. But permit me to pay tribute to all the former and serving deans of my faculty, my former teachers in Western Boys High School, my lecturers at University of Benin, and my lecturer at the Federal University of Technology, Akure. I appreciate especially the love, care, and support of Professor L.I.N. Izimoyen, Vice Chancellor, Igmeridion University, Okada. I appreciate the support and encouragement of Professor Abiodun Falodun, Rector at Edo State University, Usen. I am very grateful to Professor J.O. Ehirobu, former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Administration, for his love, care, and support towards me and my family. Many thanks to Dr. Etiosa Igminosa, Director, General Studies, and Engineer Dr. Onaiwu Oduwa, Director, Maritime and ICT Study, for their solidarity and support. I appreciate in a very special way the Public Relations Officer of the University and her husband, Dr. and Dame Dr. Andrew Ehanire, for their love, care, and support. To so my Lord Spiritual, brother and friend, Venerable Barrister David Igbenusi, the chaplain of All Saint Chapel, University of Benin, and his lovely wife, Dr. Mrs. Vanessa David Igbenusi, also popularly known as Mama Yad. I greatly cherish your prayers and love towards me and my family. May God continue to bless and uplift you as you walk in his vineyard. So the immediate past bishop of Esan Diocese and the archbishop of the ecclesiastical province of Bende, the most reverend F.J. Imehai, I say thank you for finding me worthy to be knighted in the order of St. Christopher, KSC, in the Anglican Communion. My special appreciation to the bishop of Esan Diocese, his lordship, right reverend Gabriel Elabo, and his amiable wife, Dr. Mrs. Chidalu Elabo, and all members of Esan Council of Knights, for their prayers, support, and show of love. I thank you for, for coming, and may God bless you all. My warm appreciation to all the staff of General Studies Department for their commitment and dedication to duties for the period I serve as the director. To my staff at the Office of the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, I appreciate you all for your supportive role and commitment to duty. The kind support of Professor Patrick Igminadua is highly appreciated and may God bless you abundantly. Very sincerely, I appreciate Professor J.A. Akwabi, former Director of General Studies and the Dean, Faculty of Engineering, for his love, care, and support always. I appreciate all my students, both past and present. May God bless you all and take you to a greater height in your endeavor. I appreciate the Executive Committee. I appreciate the Executive Committee and members of Bini Club who are here present. I thank you for coming. Very specially, I appreciate the coach and members of Head is Wet exercise group of the university for their support and show of love. May God continue to bless and keep us as one family. Very significantly and undeniably, I appreciate the labor and toil of my parents, Mr. and Mrs. David I. Omoruji. May the soul of my father continue to rest in the bosom of the Lord. I thank them for their parental care and for sacrificially investing in my education. You gave me everything to ensure that I had good quality education. In the same vein, I acknowledge with gratitude the love and encouragement of my parents-in-law, Sal Engineer and Lady M.O. Aroko. I am grateful to you for giving me your beloved doctor in marriage. Your support and love are highly appreciated. I appreciate the love, care, and support of my family members, uncles, aunties, brothers, and sisters. May God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. To my friends, well-wishers, and admirers, I say thank you for your motivation and for being there for me. Especially, I appreciate all who supported my inaugural lecture through prayer, cash, and kind. Time will not permit me to mention the names of everyone. My prayer is... God Almighty will continue to bless you and meet you at every point of your need. Finally, I am grateful for the support, understanding, care, and love of my darling wife, Dame Dr. O.B. Izeko. You have been a blessing, and I appreciate you for your patience and steadfastness. To my lovely children, Nosakai, Etiosa, Osaugwe, and Esosa, I love you all and may God continue to bless and keep you.
recommendations. There is no alternative to wood. Therefore, in order to ensure its continued availability and utilization, the following recommendations are made. There should be a nationwide education and campaign on government policy on plant a tree program to enhance reforestation and forest developments. There should be a reorganization of the entire forestry system at all levels of government with a view to engaging adequate, efficient, and dedicated forestry staff who will effectively monitor the forest estate under strict compliance with the forest ordinance. There should be an improved technology in wood conversion and utilization, such that wood that are considered as waste in one line of production could be easily utilized in another sector as byproduct of wood. Conclusion. The Nigerian forest estate, which was well stocked with, with utilizable timber, has been heavily depleted due to the increasing demand for timber and its products for building and other construction purposes. The demand for wood and wood products is ever increasing, and government efforts in forestry management need to be complemented by both the public and private sector in order to meet this growing demand for wood and its products. There is, therefore, the need to make appropriate and efficient utilization of wood in order to ensure its sustainability, as there is no suitable alternative to its uses in our everyday life. Thank you, and God bless you for coming. Clap, 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 clap. Hello. Well done, inaugural lecturer. The university is proud of you. Please, another round of applause. May I now please sit as I now respectfully invite Madam Vice Chancellor to recap the lecture. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the lecturer has made my job much, much simpler. We didn't hear all the zim zim and zim zam of professors. He made it truly gown and town experience. So as we leave, I am sure we are going to leave here with some added knowledge about the utilization of wood. The lecturer has done justice to the title of the lecture, Wood Utilization, the Tree, Man and His Environment. What alternative do we have? He highlighted the importance of efficient wood utilization in every aspect aspect of human endeavors from childhood through adulthood and old age. Wood, he claimed, is the most versatile material the world has ever known, and it remains the most predominant material throughout history. Wood can be utilized for construction, energy generation, and various industrial and domestic purposes, and is as old as human existence and therefore a major component of man's existence. Wood still remains in high demand in spite of plastic and other competitors for construction. Increase in the age of wood, he said, generally gives better wood qualities. The Nigerian forest estate, which was well stocked with, uh, with timber, has been heavily depleted due to increasing demand for timber and its products, as well as deforestation for other uses. He also said this is compounded by the increase in population growth, illegal logging, and increase in demand. This is further compounded by a high level of waste, a large volume of log input into soil mill, end up as mill residue and waste. With the increase of wood residues, it is now he has advised that the utilization of such must be looked into. Professor David Izeko advised, in addition to others, that since wood is renewable natural resource, increase in enlightenment 
increase sanction for illegal loggers of wood as well as employing technology is the way forward. And that will make wood more efficient and appropriate for utilization and sustainable based on his recommendations. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending and God bless you. Thank you very much, our very energetic Vice Chancellor. I believe she deserves a bigger round of applause. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful woman. Thank you, Ma. At this point, the immediate family of the lecturer will move upstage as the lecturer is being decorated by Madam Vice Chancellor. Immediate family members, please. And while that is being done, may I seek the indulgence of Madam Vice Chancellor to make the following recognitions. We welcome in a special way Dr. Mrs. Obi Zeko, wife of the inaugural lecturer. We welcome their beautiful children also. We welcome Sir Moses and Lady Toy Aroko. Incidentally, my brother and sister Knight. They are the father-in-law and mother-in-law of the inaugural lecturer. You are most welcome. We welcome Professor Oji Oshodi, former Vice Chancellor, University of Benin. We also welcome Professor Abiodun Faladu, Rector, Edo State Polytechnic, Hussein, and one of the very best of the University of Benin. Welcome, Prof. We welcome Professor Emeritus T.O.K. Aoudou, Professor Emeritus John Igene, Professor Emeritus and Mrs. Raymond Elaiho. We welcome specially also Professor O.B. Usadolo, former Dean of Students and Chairman of Ceremonials. We welcome Professor Mrs. E. Egbo Chuku. We welcome Professor Venerable Osad Osamoyi. Welcome also the University Orator, Professor Mike Omoek Berale. We welcome Professor Omoro Gyuwa, Chair, University Admissions Board. A round of applause for the Prof. He's doing very well. Well, when many have failed, the Prof is doing very well. We welcome Professor Saiti Aigbavo, Immediate Past Dean of Students. We welcome Professor Dan Inobakae. We welcome also Professor C.O. Aswe. We welcome Professor M.A. Olong. Professor Jacob Ehirobo, former DVC Administration. You are welcome. We welcome Professor Senehai. We welcome also Right Honorable Bright Omohodion, former Speaker at the State House of Assembly. Welcome also Professor Bishop Vincent Iyawe, former Provost. School of Medical Sciences, Uniben. Welcome Professor Inauna Edosa. We welcome Dame Esther Joseph. She's the President, Council of Knights, Diocese of Esa, Anglican Communion. So also we welcome Sir Emmanuel Akigbe, Secretary, Council of Knights, Diocese of Esa, Anglican Communion. We welcome Mr. B.K. Abdullahi, we welcome Mr. Clarkson Nehigiato, Senior Deputy Registrar, School of Postgraduate Studies, and who was a few weeks ago the Acting Registrar of the University. They say those who are dearest to us will live for the last and the best. So I welcome Sir Andy Ehanire. You are most welcome, sir. Refreshment is being served. Please, you will sit wherever you are, at the point that the Vice Chancellor's procession is recessing, the refreshment will halt for that moment, but you remain where you are. We don't want any noise while the recession of the procession is going on. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that's how we conclude this very wonderful, wonderful, inaugural lecture. Another round of applause for the lecturer.
And so if McDonald is ready, we shall take the Uniben Anthem and the second stanza of the National Anthem. Please rise. standing as the vice chancellor's procession recesses we welcome the chairman of asu uniben professor engineer omorege we welcome also our father professor aibweku welcome prof Russians. Let's prove them wrong. 